when I started, you know, thinking about this interview, Professor, I was, you know, thinking whether or not I would fit into what side of the equation, your optimistic view or a catastrophic one. And now I have a third one, which is they being so intelligent, the aliens being so intelligent and so superior than us and just they would look at us as ants and just sh shrug their arms and they're like, oh, okay, never mind, and just, just pass away and we will never contact them. That's a new fear that I've unlocked. Well, But it's 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 possible. Um, we should see it as a compliment if, if there is a visitor coming to visit us because, you know, if you imagine uh, tourist uh, agencies or real estate agencies uh, inter that are interstellar, then that are looking at properties on other stars and, Uh, on other planets, uh, if they come to visit us, it's a compliment, you know, and uh, we should be kind to visitors uh, yeah. because they can tell us things that we don't know about our environment. Um, so, you know, hospitality was very much uh, appreciated in ancient Greece. You know, it was a very high value because the ancient Greeks realized that the visitors bring new knowledge. Uh, and, you know, so... I see it exactly the same way. You know, for example, I once uh, saw a person on the street uh, next to my home looking at our home and my wife was saying, uh, why Why is that person staring at our home for so long? And I went to him and I asked him, uh, oh, why are you looking at our home? And he said, well, I used to live at this place uh, 50 years ago. And then he said, you know, in the backyard, the... the we buried uh, a cat named Tiger. And I said, well, the name sounds familiar because I, I saw a rock where the title Tiger was printed on it. And, you know, I obviously thought that it might be a tiger. I, I didn't dig down, but uh, we went there and he said, yeah, that's the place. And so, you know, the, the fact that I met this uh, uh, stranger allowed me to learn something new about the history of my backyard and the same could be true for us even though the solar system is familiar we were not around uh, a billion years ago hmm. and perhaps they have much more knowledge about the the cosmic neighborhood around us that we can benefit from they can tell us what happened before the big bang maybe if they have a, a understanding of how to unify quantum mechanics and gravity So I have two questions, actually, if I ever get to meet uh, or encounter uh, aliens. The first question is what happened before the Big Bang? Because it will, on the one hand, uh, inform us about our cosmic roots, where we came from, uh, but will also inform us about how to unify quantum mechanics and gravity, which is one of the major challenges in physics right now, and an unsolved problem. Uh, but the second question that I'll have is where is the nearest bar where aliens uh, socialize because I would like to meet them. Me too. But I would. I, I have to be honest, Professor. You know, I think that while being optimistic myself and, and thinking rationally about the possibility of interacting, you know, uh, drinking a beer with a fellow alien <laughs> and them talking to me <laughs> about their, their challenges on their everyday life, That's a rational, good idea. But in my heart, Professor, I have to be honest. I'm, I'm thinking about the place where we are as a society and, and, you know, also me individually and all of the turmoil that's happening around the world. And are we prepared to, to encounter an alien species? And also, you know, continuing on that question that we addressed already, what is there to lose? If I'm not prepared psychologically to face aliens which also deviates to another tangent, which we'll have to address later on, which is the U.S. government in the, this whole equation, what is happening there. But if I'm not ready to engage with them, how will I not trigger my evolutionary code, which is drop a nuke on them? Oumuamua is coming real fast to us, just fire everything that we have onto them, let's not engage with them. And what will that impact, you know, my nine to five life? My, my right. schedule, you know, it, it, are we ready for that, Professor? Well, first of all, I should comment that um, four centuries ago, we were not ready to the news that we are not at the center of the universe, right? That's why Galileo Galilei 
was put in house arrest by the church. Uh, he was sentenced so that uh, nobody would listen to what he has to say, as if that will change reality. The point is, he just looked through his telescope and saw the moons of Jupiter, and that convinced him that, you know, not everything is moving around the Earth because the moons were moving around Jupiter. It's a very simple point, and the fact that the church put him in house arrest did not change what he was seeing, okay? And and just think about the possibility that we would still insist that we are at the center of the world, everything moves around us, including Mars, and then NASA would launch rockets towards Mars to visit there, and it, they will never reach their destination because we have the wrong model of the reality that surrounds us. That's a very bad thing to... to so, you know denying that we have neighbors is a very bad approach by not looking you know it's just like putting your head in the sand or closing the windows uh, uh, not uh, checking if you have neighbors that's not a good approach it's much better to check out if if we have neighbors and with respect to the response you know if we become violent when we notice any visits you know that i think that's uh, actually a good uh, test of our intelligence if we are not that intelligent to be curious and learn from something that is far more advanced than we are, and we respond violently to that, you know, you can think about an alligator opening his mouth and, you know, trying to eat anything that swims nearby. And, you know, that's not an intelligent approach. Uh, and, you know, at the end, you know, irrespective of what we do here on Earth, the sun will boil off all the oceans uh, on Earth. And uh, if we keep uh, insisting that we are alone and we should stay on Earth and there is nothing else to go uh, to, and um, you know, then um, we, will be, uh, we will go through extinction. I mean, the Earth will become a desert, just like Mars. And... Presumably, a lot of planets that had conditions similar to the Earth went through that already because most stars formed billions of years before the Sun. And by now, they evolved to a state where if you had a habitable planet like the Earth, it was burned up by the evolution of the star. So there must have been a lot of tragedies which do not reflect a high intelligence. So civilizations that did not leave their planet, that did not learn about how other civilizations can cope with those threats, they, you know, they went to, to extinction.